Monique Lamont, who is not only a romance writer, she's also one hot mom. <laughs> Hi, so glad, I'm so glad to be here today um, with Sharice and you know a lot of the other authors that are here. Um, some of those, you know, getting to be around like other authors who write different things, dealing with romance and um, those type of genres just really um, always gets me excited because as African American women and African American romance writers, a lot of times, you know, we don't necessarily get to network like we want to or sometimes we're even seems to be we're pitted against each other when all we want to do is support each other. So I'm very happy to be here. So, um, you know, I've started writing, um, probably I've been writing since 1998, and um, that I kind of got into it through my, through my husband. I was a huge African-American romance reader, and my husband said, hey, why don't you try and write so we can cut down on the book, book buying bill, but that didn't happen. So instead, um, I started reading a lot more to try and understand and kind of get this craft. I started going to different workshops. So, you know, Monique Lamont was born after that um, I, when I started writing. And I really enjoyed it and telling the stories. But I started to realize that as I was writing and telling these stories and the romantic stories, um, that I started having all these understanding about, hmm, well, maybe these other things in the heat level kept building for me. So um, I had a, a bunch of different women that uh, would come to me from my church and they would say things like, you know, tell me different things about, you know, um, this this situation or this act. I'm having these, you know, thoughts and understanding. My husband has questions. I don't know who else to go to. So in that, not only did I start writing the kind of central romance book, but I moved into writing as a woman. And in that writing, you know, I started writing a lot of books. And those all stem from, you know, the questions that women have. But they still email me to this day, you know, and I'm sure you've the exact same thing. People ask me questions. Well, in this scene, or should I do this? And, you know, all those questions sometimes were a little shocking. But I don't get shocked as much now that I've been writing a since 2006. But um, I do enjoy it. I'm looking forward to getting together with all the rest of the hot mamas coming up in March. Um, so if you don't have your ticket, you need to make sure you get your ticket. Right now. Now. Right now, get your ticket. So we'll be ha you know, happy to sit down with you and just sit back and enjoy ourselves. So, so tell people how they can follow you on Facebook, Twitter, website. Yes, you can follow me through um, my website, um, moniquelamont.com, uh, or you can also follow me through um, Yvette Hines. Dot com. Um, both of those. I have um, a blog site for Yvette, which is Sassy Yvette Hines. Um, and through both of those, um, I always like to connect with my readers. And that's really, I mean, there's always Facebook you can connect with me. And of course, there's Twitter um, for both, um, for Yvette Hines has all of those, as well as Monique Lamont. And that's my story, Bear's Gold. Um, that amazingly, a fairy tale that got, you know, people just, they fell in love. They like the fairy tales. So, <laughs> so definitely. So, um, Anytime, email me, connect with me, um, and I just look forward to talking to you readers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay, so again, back at the Hollow Literary Festival in Waynesboro, and I'm here with my friend, Richard Midway. Yay. We've known each other online for years, and this is the first day that we officially met. And she is just as nice in person as she has been in emails and anything I've asked her to do, she's done for me. So tell us about your books and being here this afternoon. Well, this is a great event. I have enjoyed myself tremendously. This is the first time I've ever done the Hollow event. I saw it on Facebook, I think on your e -bike. And I said, oh, I want to be a part of that. So I kind of weaseled my way in. She didn't weasel her way in. She was like, we going to add Bruce Ray to the list. Because not only is she a great writer, she's also one hot mother. <laughs> That's right. I'm now going to get my fascinator going. But yeah, I, I, I love the event. It's very positive. I love folks here. I'm having a great time. I'm definitely going to try to do this again next year. They've already got my information to do a, a, another event here on my own, so I can't wait for that. So, so far, so good. I'm enjoying myself. I want to say that you are probably the most popular Yeah. So, I'm going to get you some more chocolate for that. <laughs> I need some, some theme to go home on. <laughs> so yeah, chocolate will do it. So tell us, tell everybody about your books and 
Okay. I think most people know me for writing erotic romances, mainly interracial romances, and a lot of BDSM. And I think this is my most popular one, is Love My Way. And this one is about a uh, dominant who searches for a submissive for a reality TV show. Otherwise, I call it a, a BDSM, uh, the bachelor with a whip kind of thing. And most people know me for this, and, which is great. And I'm so glad that people like gravitated to this book. Um, my other series that I, I'm in is from Whispers. The first one was Reignited, and I'm in it with um, Yvette Hines and Aaliyah Burke. Like I said, it's from Whispers. Um, the stories are sold individually as e-books, and uh, the book is in print. All the stories are in print and in e-books. I'm also in Bacon, and that's a BDSM story in this one. Uh, and this is also with Aaliyah Burke and Yvette Hines, also through Whispers. And the last one, the most recent one, is Wonderland, and this is Holiday Stories. Um, mine is very nice and gentle, far from the old Bridget. <laughs> I know, being nice and calm. So, uh, but yeah, this is another series that's with uh, Leah Burke and Yvette Hines, also through Whispers. And right now I'm working on a BDSM novella, so I'm hoping it will be an anthology. And I'm working on a contemporary romance, also interracial. So without dropping a name, <laughs> but there's a certain book, you know, that a lot of people have been reading that deals with BDSM. What's the difference in what you write as far as BDSM, submissives, and things like that in your work versus the pop culture uh, book about the uh, BDSM life? life. <laughs> Um, to be honest, I have not I know the book of what you're talking about. I have not read it personally. Um, from what I've read online from the author herself, um, her only research has been online. I am different in that I actually found a local group in my area in Virginia, and I have been associated with them for almost 10 years. And I go to their munches, I go to their demonstrations, I've been to their play parties, I go to BDSM themed events and sell my books there and do their workshops. I am in it. I have put the paddle in my hand and can paddle someone, I've chained someone, I've done wax play. I mean, I'm actually hands on doing these things. So I, and I wanted to do that because I wanted to get into the mind of dominant doing this to a submissive because I thought that that was the best way to get into that mindset. I won't know that just going online and reading about someone else's experience. I wanted to see the expression on their faces, hear what they, if they moan or if they cry. You know, I just wanted that visceral experience because I thought I could portray that better in my Thank you. Thank you. But I mean, in, in just hearing that research, I mean, all I can say is, you know, it's great to be a writer. <laughs> it's so great to be a writer. You know, you can't just work at the bank and say I'm doing this for research. Exactly. But, you know. <laughs> And I was really surprised when I approached them and said, hey, I'm an author, can I watch you? They were like, yeah, sure, come on in. I said, oh, okay, I thought they were going to be like, no, absolutely not. But, you know, they've been wonderful to me. Very, um, very generous with their time and their information. Do you think it's because, you know, this, you know, when, when people hear BDSM, they automatically think, you know, a lot of people have negative thoughts about it. Do you think that because your books are written and wrapped this way, they are queer, the people in these books, it's, it's not, they don't turn into serial killers, you know, they don't, you know, turn into words of society. Do you think that's why you have groups like the one that you visited with Gene that are happy to share their information? Absolutely, because they want their lifestyle portrayed accurately. And to be honest, the reason why I got in, into writing BDSM is because I didn't understand it myself. I saw this, you know, what everyone else sees on TV and what they see in movies, and I assumed that that was accurate, that people are in pain and that people are sadistic and, and, and that, you know, it's not about respecting another person, and it's not that way. I was very surprised when I got around this group of people and discovered why they're drawn to the lifestyle, why they're so um, subservient to uh, or uh, Adame, you know, why, why it works for them. So, yeah, that, that's the one thing that surprised me once I got into the research and hanging around these people. So, tell everybody how they can follow you on Facebook, Twitter. I am everywhere. Um, my website, of course, is BridgetMidway.com. I am on Facebook, Bridget Midway, one word. 
Uh, I'm on Twitter, Bridget Midway. Um, if you're into the lifestyle, I'm on Fet Life, <laughs> Bridget Midway. <laughs> I'm also in my dungeon space, <laughs> Bridget Midway. So I am everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>